council uh, meeting to order uh, motion to adopt the agenda please so on chat uh, discussion all in favor uh, adoption of the previous minutes motion uh, Blanchette and Salt will go the other way this time. <laughs> <coughs> Discussion? <can> <laughs> no, all good. All in favor? Carried. Uh, adoption of the minutes of the February 24th, 2015 regular meeting of council. Motion? Salt. Blanchette. All in favor? Carried. Delegations. Motion to receive. Blanchette. Salt. <laughs> <laughs> We're pleased to have a delegation from KPMG and copies of the Village of Belmont's draft 2014 consolidated financial statements. Calling Valentine. Thank you. Thank you very much for allowing me to come to the meeting this evening and present the audited financial statements uh, for December 31st, 2014. Um, I think everybody has copies in their agenda, I'm hoping. Okay, great. Um, so, yeah. first. State your name. Oh, sorry. Colleen, Colleen Valentine with KPMG. Okay, so first of all, I'd like to thank Lori and Anne and the team here for helping us get the audit done. Um, it went really smoothly again. I'd also like to confirm KPMG's independence from the village so that we are able to uh, provide an audited uh, report, a financial statement. Um, no significant changes in accounting standards this year, so thank heavens we did ha didn't have anything major coming down the pipe for 2015 will be the new implementation for the contaminated sites, which I believe the management team here is working on. Um, so we may have some changes. Uh, I think they're still determining what the impact of that will be on the 2015. So we will have a bit of change probably in 2015. Certainly not anything to what we had the last change round. And no, uh, no changes on auditing standards for the coming year that we're aware of at this point. So. That's, uh, that's good. So flipping over to the page, uh, just the first one is the management's responsibility for the financial statements. So Anne and Lori take uh, responsibility for the actual financial statements and work together with us to prepare the audited opinion on that. So they sign that responsibility. The next page is the audit report. Uh, we've issued a clean audit report this year, so no issues, no management letter, as I think I previously mentioned. Um, the only change in the audit report this year is uh, the second page, uh, we used to have another matters uh, because of a schedule that we did for the gas tax funding. We've removed that schedule now because due to the new agreement that was signed last year, the presentation has changed on that funding. Um, and I'll go into that when I get into the financial statements. So we removed the schedule and removed that paragraph from the audit report. Otherwise, the audit report is the same from last year. Flipping over to page one is the consolidated statement of financial position. Um, so I'm going to go through just and highlight a few things. Um, if there's any questions that I've missed, please feel free to, uh, to ask me. Um, so the statement of financial position or balance sheet shows the assets and liabilities of the uh, village. Um, cash has increased from last year by about $350,000. Accounts receivable is pretty much in line with last year, so um, no major changes there. And then the investment in the community forest is up. We um, pick up the income of the community forest in the village financial statements every year, so that change is purely due to the net income of the uh, community forest this year. So overall, the financial assets have increased by about $1.7 million. So um, positive, but a good portion of that is due to the income, the investment in the community forest. Uh, liabilities, uh, no major changes there. The one that I want to draw your uh, attention to, as I previously mentioned, the gas tax funding that the village uh, gets every year uh, used to be treated as deferred revenue, so the third line under um, financial liabilities. So last year's number includes the gas tax funding. Due to the change in the agreement, um, they've opened up the spending classifications that you can spend that money on now. And so because they've opened it up so much, we can no longer treat it as potentially repayable back to the funding agency. Um, so we've now flown it through the income statement. So we've treated it all as revenue in the current year. Um, they've even uh, loosened up the repayments. So if you were to sell one of the assets, you used to have to repay the funds. Now they allow you to keep the money and just respend it on another project. So they've, because they've loosened it up, it changed the classification for accounting purposes. 
So we ended up writing off at about $230,000 this year as income. Um, 96 of it was received in the current year, and then the 134 or something was carried forward from the previous year. Okay, so that's the major change. Um, debt is going down, no new debt this year, so just the repayments in the current year, so down from 1,061,000 last year to 962 this year. Total liabilities are down uh, about 100,000 over last year. So your net financial assets are up about 1.7 million. So that's a really strong um, showing for the village. Um, sometimes those numbers can be negative because the debt that you use to buy capital assets with is included in that number, whereas the capital asset itself is down below. So the fact that you're positive that much, it's, it's a strong financial position. Um, as mentioned, down below we have the non-financial assets, which includes prepaids, and then the tangible capital assets. Tangible capital assets, $14 million, not much change. Uh, there was very minimal capital projects done this year. So essentially it decreased because we're depreciating those assets. So accumulated surplus at the bottom, $19 million versus $18 million last year, but a good portion of that is related to the capital assets. And I'll show a breakdown of that in Note 9 um, when we get into the notes. Okay. Any questions on that page? Okay, flipping over to page two is the income statement and accumulated surplus. And here, unless there's any specific questions, overall um, actual revenue, uh, budgeted revenue, 3.5 million, actual 4.2, and last year was three. But again, we've got the line in there with the equity, um, the earnings of the community forest in there. So factoring that out, you're actually um, you know, in line with budget when you take that number out, okay? Um, down in expenditures, uh, again, on budget and last year in all categories. Um, the only thing that's different is, is that depreciation is not budgeted for. So general government, uh, water transmission and waste treatment are all looking like they're over budget, but it's just because that depreciation expense is not budgeted for. Um, so expenditures last year, 2.8 million versus 2.9 million this year, and budgeted was 3 million. So even though depreciation expense wasn't budgeted, you were still in total under budget. Um, annual surplus looking at 1.3, but that includes the um, equity from the VCF. So actual um, surplus would be around 400,000. That's after backing out the depreciation expense and does not include capital expenditures. Okay, any questions on that page? Flipping over the next page, um, page three is the changes in net financial assets. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this page, but it highlights um, that the actual capital expenditures for last year were 91,000. Depreciation expense was 542. So it takes that surplus number and it puts it back more to a cash basis to what we used to present uh, back before PSAP days. PSAP, yeah, Public Sector Accounting Board, <laughs> the one that made us change all the, yeah. Uh, flipping over to page four is the statement of cash flows. Again, I'm not going to spend too much time here, but anything that's not bracketed is a use of ca or a source of cash for the village. Anything that's bracketed is cash has gone out for that. And the bigger one here, um, well, actually, there wasn't anything really, really large. Um, you can see the ap acquisition of the capital assets on the midway down the page for $91,000 and then the debt repayment of about $100,000. Okay, any questions on that page? Okay, flipping over to page five. Um, we start with the notes to the financial statements. There were no real major changes in the notes this year. I'll point out a couple of things that we expanded on just to make it more compliant with the public sector rules. But other than that, the substance of the notes are the same. Um, note one just describes the accounting policies that the village follows for recording things such as depreciation on their assets, revenue recognition, um, the funds that you're um, keeping track of, um, fact that you're collecting taxes for other organizations. Flipping over to page six, um, it goes into how we're accounting for the village's um, investment in the community forest. Um, flipping over to page seven, under F, uh, 
There's the depreciation rates that were set by policy back when we uh, started depreciation, depreciating the uh, tangible capital assets back in 2009, I think it was, um, and just things like that. These policies have to apply, be applied consistently year over year, so we can't change them to make things look better or worse. So that's one of the things we look at and make sure that they've been applying consistently. If we were to change anything, we would have to disclose that. Okay, so those are all good. Flipping over to page eight, we get into a little more detail on some of the numbers that we've just looked at on the other financial statements. Uh, note three breaks down the accounts receivable to what's receivable for taxes from grants, sales tax, and then other items. Flipping over to page nine provides more information on the investment in the community forest, so it kind of recaps their balance sheet and income statement in a one-page summary for the uh, village statements. Flipping over to page 10, um, gives you a little more details on accounts payable, uh, the DCC reserve fund, and then the long-term debt starts at the bottom there as well. Nothing uh, really that's changed or anything that is large differences or anything like that from the prior year. Flipping over to page 11 shows the debt uh, so the greater loan was paid out this year, and um, we just still have the uh, issues for the community hall, the garbage truck, and then the water treatment plant that was done a few years ago. Uh, then we get to a landscape page, which just provides a bit more details on the tangible capital assets by category of assets, so land, uh, buildings, machinery, roads, etc. Um, shows the cost and then how much depreciation has been recorded against the cost of those assets. The first page is for 2014, flipping over the next page is for 2013, just to give you comparatives. Page 14 is probably, I think, the more, most important note um, for, for everyone, and that's the accumulated surplus breakdown. So that 13, or pardon me, 19 million that we saw on the face of the balance sheet. Um, just shows how much is tied up in capital assets. So we have 13 million of that tied up in capital assets. Then we have the general fund, the unrestricted. Uh, so general had fund had earnings of about 95,000 this year. Um, and then the restricted portion is the equity in the uh, community forest, along with that gas tax money. We tucked that in there as well, so it was set aside. There is still a little bit of restriction on what can be spent on, it should be capital. But, you know, the restrictions have opened up a lot, but we thought we'd just put it into that restricted um, classification. And then we have the water utility fund and the sewer fund, they're unrestricted or unencumbered surplus numbers. Uh, the reserves uh, down below, so we have the capital works, land sales, and then we have unexpended fund reserves. Um, the only change in the reserve funds were the interest earned on the funds this year. Uh, there was no additional money spent or put aside into the reserve funds. Okay, any questions on that page? Okay, flipping over the page to page 15, note 10, uh, commitments and contingencies. So sometimes there might be things that the village could potentially be responsible for paying for, but we can't quantify them yet, they're not real, but we have to disclose them in the financial statements. There was no change in these notes, so they're the standard, um, being part of the regional district, you might have to pick up part of their budget, um, the fact that you've got debt, through the MFA, you might have to pick up some of that. Um, the pension plan, there's the standard note we get from Victoria every year that's in there that if it's underfunded, which at the last actuarial evaluation it was, hopefully that'll change because the market is, I think, a bit stronger than the last one. Um, the fact that you're obligated to collect and transmit taxes on behalf of other governments, um, school taxes, et cetera, regional district. And then the fact that you're part of the Municipal Insurance Association. So there's nothing new in there. There was no, um, nothing to add this year. It's all the standard stuff that's there year over year. Uh, note 11 on page 16 just provides a bit of a breakdown of the taxes that were collected. So it shows the total taxes collected of 1.7 million and the fact that 1 million of that went to other levels of government. So the village actually kept 722,000. Okay, next page, um, page 17, note 12, just shows the a better breakdown of the government transfers or grants that you've received, and um, just, just a requirement for disclosure. Um, note 13 is the one that changed, um, and I believe it might have been, ex no, no, it was this, the draft version that you got was 
the correct one. So we had to go through and just identify what each um, line item on your income statement is responsible for. So we provided just a bit of a description of what general government services are, environmental services, transportation protective, et cetera. And then flipping over two more pages to page number 20 and going sideways again, that in the prior years we've put that schedule with just expenditures, but we've added the revenue now by that breakdown. Okay, so that schedule expanded on a little bit more. First one is for 2014, next page is for 2013. So you have the comparatives. Okay, and then flipping over to page 22, um, comparative information, uh, just that we might have changed um, a little bit of how we classified things between expenditure line items, nothing significant, nothing that changed surplus or anything, just that we uh, need to disclose it and then the trust fund that you have, the cemetery trust fund that you maintain. Last page, um, we reconcile the budget data. So the budget, per the budget bylaw that was approved last year um, by yourselves uh, is slightly different. The surplus amount is different because we um, pick up depreciation, so we back, add that into the fact that it should have been budgeted and just reconcile it to the budget number that's shown on the face of the income statement. Okay, and that's it. Any questions? Questions? Comments? Just, just comments? 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 Um, kudos to Lori. That's a fantastic job. And Anne. And <laughs> thank you for doing this. Um, a lot of it goes, but, you know, we're, we're in the good. Right? You're in the good. Okay. Yes. yes. <laughs> I know. I never want to be up here standing and saying you're not. So <laughs> no, <laughs> thank no. you to that, you know, to yeah. everybody for making that possible not yeah. to be able to come up here and say we're in the good. Yeah. But yeah. Thank you, Lori. This is great. Good job. As well, thanks again. It's always great to hear about a clean audit. Good job to all of staff for working so hard. Um, gosh knows council really challenges them sometimes <laughs> and tries to push the envelope and the limits, so thank you. And, and I just happen to be one of those numbers geeks that gets all excited when reading these kind of reports. So <laughs> I was like, oh, this is fun. <laughs> so, so, most people yeah. wouldn't enjoy it, but it's, I always enjoy your reports. It's funny how we're a different breed. Hey, we are. Yeah, yeah. And I have to say, you know, Lori um, works really hard to allow us to get out here as early as we do as well, which we push her a little bit just, and it really helps with our schedule as well that she works as hard as she does in January so we can get out here the first week of February or the last week of January. It's, yeah, we don't it's leave great. The office in January. Yeah, I bet you don't. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, no other questions then? That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Colleen. Yes. I have a motion to receive. receive. Motion to or uh, all in favor to receive. Carried. Carried. Uh, no unfinished business? Uh, yes. What we need to do now, your worship, Councillor Ferguson, no, is we need to that. receive the um, financial statements. What we did was receive the presentation, but we need a separate motion uh, in order to receive the financial statements. The consolidated financial statements. Correct. May I have a motion to receive the 2014 consolidated financial statements? Lanchette, Salt. Questions, comments? All in favor? Carried. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, item five, unfinished business. I see none. Uh, item six, correspondence for action. The City of Port Moody requests support for, quote, declaration of the right to a healthy environment, unquote. Resolution as forwarded to the Lower Mainland Local Government Association, the Union of British Columbia Municipalities and the Federation of Canadian Municipalities and member municipal governments. The recommendation here that Council supports the City of Port Moody's declaration to the right to a healthy environment resolution. May I have a motion? Council Salt, Lanchette, discussion. Do we actually have to do a separate support right now? It looks like it's going to be going through all the channels and it'll be brought up probably at UBCM. Not that I don't support it, it's just, I'm just wondering if we have to create any extra work for staff when they're already so busy, if this is going to be. It just says that they respectfully request that council favorably support this initiative when it comes forth for discussion um, at UBCM and the area associations. So. 
Do we have to do anything over and above stuff? That's it's up to you. up to you. That's up to council. Okay. What do you want to do? If, if they're booting it through to UBCM, it'll come up then. It'll come up then. Yeah. So, any further discussion? All in favor to support the City of Port Moody's Declaration of the Right to a Healthy Environment Resolution. <laughs> Opposed. It, well, we're, we're not well, opposing it. We're, we're just, not yeah. Do we have to actually? It, the, support, the support here doesn't require anything. It doesn't require an actual yeah. letter or anything. So we support them, right? Gary. We, we support, support them. Yeah. And when it comes to UBCM, UBCM, I'm sure we'll be supporting it then too. Yeah. But the motion on the floor is that council supports the City of Port Moody's Declaration of the Right to a Healthy Environment. Sure. Which we do. Yeah. yeah. Which you do. Good. All in favor. Okay. Fun. All in favor. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Reading file. Uh, is there anything in 7.1 or 7.2? 7.1 being a resort municipality initiative, the RMI update from the province of British Columbia, 7.2 being the Valmont Community Sports Day Association copy of February 24th, 2015 correspondence from delegation. Anything you'd like to discuss? Anything pull out of that? Yeah. On to administrative. Oh, uh, Councillor Salt. Thank you very much for the update on the RMI. It's nice to see that we have gotten tentatively approval for another year, so it's nice to see that. Capped. Capped. So there will be a reduction. There will be a cap, which Probably is unfortunate. Probably 20% but reduction. But at least we did get a, an update here, so thank you. Further comments, questions? Administrative reports. Director of Finance, UBCM 2015 Asset Manager Planning Program Application. Motion to receive. Blanchette Salt. Discussion. Have we done this before? The other was for the lift station application. This is um, a. The, a grant from the same granting pool, but this is the um, asset um, or infrastructure planning section of that grant. So this is, yeah. A, so it's just the next this, another. You did this a month ago for the lift station grant. Yeah. This is now the. Uh, <laughs> okay. And we're not applying under the gas tax agreement, correct? Because they're correct. saying you can only apply either through UBCM, through this asset management planning program. Correct. or the gas tax agreement but not both correct okay just want to make sure the uh, um, sorry <clears throat> so salt. the other um, thing I'm noticing is they also one of the uh, bullets under the application process it's indicating that the council board resolution must indicate support by the local government for the proposed project which it does however as well a willingness to provide overall grant management which our resolution doesn't say that so i just want to make sure our resolution is covering exactly what what's required required um it's on so page, make that as four, page four um the last bullet above number six grant management okay. responsibilities It just says approves filing uh, 10,000 Can we modify the resolution okay. to include that statement then? How does that motion read, Mr. Young? I believe it will read that council approves filing a $10,000 matching grant application to the 2015 UBCM Asset Management Planning Program and will administer the funds. I'm looking for the actual bullet point. Um, Is it on page four? Page four, the last bullet point, yes. Must indicate support. Okay. Okay. And UBCM Asset Management Planning Program. And the and the village is willing to provide overall grant management for the funds. So we have um, councillors Blanchett and Salt have moved the original motion. 
But uh, which be. councilor is amending the motion? Thank you. Thank you. Sir. And we do have money set for this? We're applying for the grant for, yes, the matching portion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some of which can be in kind as well. Yeah. Any other further discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Carried. Dire uh, 8.2, Director of Finance, Accounts Payable, Monthly Report, 2015. Motion to receive salt and chat. Questions, discussion? All in favor? Carried. Received, actually. Uh, monthly staff report. Monthly staff report for, 2000, or for February 2015. Uh, the council accepts the February 2015 staff report and receives the Tourism Belmont February 3rd, 2015 meetings, minutes and draft March 3rd, 2015 meeting minutes for information purposes. Motion to accept. Um, there was on item three, the tourism draft, yeah. there was a um, council recommendation for tourism to recommend um, Francis Mearsman to the tourism board. Are we doing that or? Yeah, I know that too. Yeah. Is that, is, are these the draft ones? It's the, it's yeah, tourism it's Belmont draft March 3rd, uh, meeting minutes. Yeah, so these would have been drafts simply because they just had that meeting and they wouldn't have been approved yeah. by their board right. yet at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. So do we need to wait until they're formally approved before we I don't can see. appoint him? I believe that yeah. they usually bring forward the confirmed minutes. Yes, they will have to wait until the minutes are adopted before council can Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Better to check. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Then I'll make a motion to receive. One chat. Second to consult. Questions? I'm glad to see we finally received an approval for a new community hall ramp. And then it's going for RFP, finally. Thank goodness. That's been a project that's been on the books for a long time. So I'm so relieved that we're finally going to hopefully see that project happen. Yeah. Further discussion? For me. Anyone in favor to receive? Carried. <coughs> Item 10, bylaws and policies, 10.1. Uh, Village of Belmont Zoning Bylaw Amendment, bylaw number 716, 2015 under the recommendation that council gives final reading to and adopts the Village of Elmont Zoning Bylaw Amendment Bylaw number 716-2015. Motion, please. Blanchette, Salt, discussion. All in favor? Carried. Council reports. Motion to receive. Blanchette and Salt. Who goes first? Oh, You're I first here. <laughs> <coughs> Councillor, I can assure you that this is not a conflict of interest. <laughs> I might have to leave the room. Uh, I don't have mine right in front of me. Give me a minute. Somebody else go first. Okay, I'll go. Oh, do you want, did you want to go, Councillor Salt? No, you go. Okay. Alphabetical. Um, so March 2nd, I had the uh, Children and Youth Mental Health meeting, and we are trying to figure out a way to get rid of the stigma that seems to follow mental health everywhere it goes. Um, it's a disease like everything else, and we just have to figure out how to get people to talk about mental health, how to address it, how to let everybody come out and say, and let, it's no big deal, right? You know. Um, does that sound right? Yeah. 
March 3rd was the better at home. We're at the um, station now where we're doing policies and procedures and we're hiring a coordinator. So that program's moving fast along. We're hoping to be uh, up and running in April. Uh, March 3rd was the uh, community initiatives. We got all of our packages, 17 really great applications. And don't forget that uh, staff has been working really, really hard for putting these together. And Thursday at 5.30 at the high school are the presentations. Make sure everybody comes. There will be um, uh, a foyer and a, um, an open house at 6.30. The presentation is supposed to start. Okay, um, so that's different from every year, so remember 6.30. And who's doing the um, concession? The uh, Vailmont uh, Elementary School. Uh, okay. It's a fundraiser for uh, Barkerville's uh, field trip. Okay, so bring lots of cash. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Pardon? The open house, yes. open house starts at 5.30, that's and at 6.30 we head into the... Um, Presentation. Thank you. Uh, uh, March 4th, I went to the Wells, Graith, North Thompson, Robson Valley Geopark planning session, which was fantastic to find out, you know, what exactly a geopark is, how they work, how we fit into that little network. Um, and that's it for me. That's it. <laughs> that's, that, that's, that's it. You've been busy. <laughs> You don't want to go first? I can. Go ahead. Right. <laughs> On February 25th, I had a conversation with Carl Sa uh, Salas of the uh, Geo Sci Geoscience BC. Um, phase 1 RFP was awarded to Kerwood uh, Wardell and Geothermex. Uh, it was signed the second week of January. Prelims studies coming out in uh, to begin in April with a final report out mid-June. Uh, they're to look at 18 sites, the best potential heading forward under a very heavily scrutinized uh, decision ma uh, matrix, which also includes the canoe reach right here in town. Um, they'll be looking at things like r risk economics uh, and basing firm pricing to extract resources at different depths. Then uh, they're currently uh, dreaming up a uh, Second RFP for direct use, that low-hanging fruit uh, near the surface with the hopes to create like a cookbook uh, for First Nations and smaller communities for efficient extraction. Uh, and also in that RFP, they're going to completely eliminate certain locations. So they'll take those 18, take them down to nine, and then really have that site-specific resource. Uh, and um, second stage also is to receive some partners, um, NDIT, and letters of support from uh, those communities and First Nations. All right, a Vailmont Community Force meeting on March the 2nd. Um, exciting to hear that a potential partnership uh, with Vailmont Glacier Destinations in road infrastructure and other uh, installations. Uh, we have some cutting interests up in that area, and um, it's just a, it's really in the prelim stages right now. Uh, obviously, the master plan has not yet been approved by the province, um, but it, it's nice to hear that these partnerships can be created ahead of the game. Uh, Tourism Vailmount, uh, we had a bit of a delegation from Flinro, uh, Ministry of Forest Lands, Natural Resources Op Operations, uh, highlighting the Wildlife Management Unit area, which is now Cranberry Marsh. Uh, they're looking on re-establishing an agreement with Ducks Unlimited. They're looking to uh, really focus in on habitat management signage, uh, which creates some funding options. Uh, some brushing, redecking, uh, perhaps uh, other partnerships with local groups, and the draft plan uh, is complete and will be forwarded to the ministry at the end of March. Uh, we also sent out some support letters to the museum and Yora for uh, their CBT grants, with the hopes that it generates 
a head in a bed. So more things that are happening, the more visitors we get, the longer they stay because the better activities they can enjoy. The summer and winter 2015 guide is moving ahead, visitor guide, sorry, and uh, which is exciting to hear. The following day on the 4th, I had an informal meeting with Flynn Rowe and the Nature Trust of British Columbia, TM Claremont and Duncan McCall uh, to further um, identify issues and interest in the wildlife management area, Cranberry Marsh. Uh, they're looking for kind of the, 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 ov the overall picture, you know, community value and then getting to some entrenched engagement and educational awareness towards regulations. Um, their, you know, ministry, they're looking for the community to really hammer down and really get some good uh, legislation in place that will maximize use and minimize impact. Things, you know, uh, I won't go into much detail. On the March the 9th, I had a Lower Columbia uh, update. I really wanted to take part in it to get a better understanding of the Columbia River Treaty and how both Kin Basket and the Arrows uh, operate to mitigate that. And it, it, the water levels in both reservoirs are extremely low in the Arrows and extremely high in Kin Basket, so that was kind of my reasoning for joining that conference call. Some fun stuff. And today I'm here. Wow. I see. I don't have much. <laughs> I've been busy we doing other things. Yeah, we all get our turns. Um, <clears throat> on Tuesday, March 3rd, I had a Valmont Historic Society board meeting and um, of course, there's ongoing struggles for uh, the exterior renovation project. Um, one thing that the Historic Society Board are asking the village is to allow a board representative um, to participate in the renovation project with the village by providing input on the request for quotes, um, proposals, whatever it ends up being, and assisting village staff in overseeing the project. And so. Um, through some discussion with staff, we're going to just start with some preliminary, um, maybe getting together meetings with this board member, um, myself, staff, and kind of lay it all out and see where we go from there. So one way or another, hope to get this project done this year, hopefully, but you know, it's, it's uh, always a challenge. The next regular board meeting of the Historic Society is open to the public to attend and it's on Tuesday, April 7th at 1.30 in the meeting room of the Community Services Building. And also on March 4th, I also attended the one of four of the Wells Gray North Thompson Robson Valley Global Geopark Project Public Information <laughs> Sessions. Wow, that was a mouthful. They, they said that day that they're going to have to come up with a shorter name <laughs> for the Geo Park. We'll come up with a <laughs> um, they had um, presentations in um, Chuchua with the Simp, they had in Clearwater, Valmount, and then the following day in McBride. Um, <clears throat> we had a really good turnout. We had about 17 people from Valmount and McBride and Blue River attend our session. Um, this is one of the projects that arose from the McBride to Barrier Corridor pilot that was started back in January of 2012, um, which was a part of the Ministry of Jobs, Tourism and Skills Training Regional Economic Investment Pilot, and it was a key initiative of the BC Jobs Plan with support from the federal government. So this is, this is something that's been in the works for three years already and part of that whole corridor project. Um, incredibly interesting information session. I'm so glad I was able to go to learn more about the project and the potential economic development opportunities uh, a global geopark designation could create for all of the communities that it would fall um, over. And a report will be compiled, they advised us, by the end of March, which will be completing phase one, which is the feasibility phase of this project. So we look forward to hearing more um, and, and collaborating with the other municipalities within the geopark range or area that they're proposing um, to see then if we carry on on to phase two. So 
watch for further updates on that. And I'm here today. I think that's it. <laughs> <clears throat> one thing I did, <clears throat> excuse me, one thing I failed to ask council in 11 1 and 11 2, we have some travel expense reports. Mm -hmm. Is there any, should probably have a motion to receive those? Sure. So, one chat, questions, comments? All in favor to receive. Thank you. New business. And? No new business? Excellent. List of outstanding, yeah, pardon me. me. Uh, excuse me, Councillor. You have uh, motions for 11 1 and 11 2, but you we did not close out. Three. Thank you. A motion to receive council reports uh, and accepts the reports provided by council members. Blanchette and Salt, all in favor? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Young. Welcome. No new business. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Should I have some? Am I missing some? <laughs> no. <laughs> Just making sure that we go with the flow. Uh, item 13, list of outstanding previous council resolutions. Motion to receive, please. Blanchette, Salt. Discussion? It's great that it's so little. <laughs> and shrinking. Yeah. Council Salt? No. All in favor to receive? Carried calendar of events. Calendar of events for March and April 2015. Any discussion? We now are on to item 15, public comment. Um, any member of the public here, if they have a comment on a subject pertaining to the agenda, uh, you may, keep, if you could please keep your comments to two minutes and begin by stating your name and address. No comments? I, yeah, I'm inundated. <laughs> Hearing none, uh, motion to receive. There's nothing, nothing to receive. receive. There's nothing to receive. Uh, item 16, notice to proceed in camera. Uh, that we proceed in camera, uh, in camera council meeting for consideration of one item per section 90, uh, one D, I, and K of the community charter. Salt. Yeah, the minor modification, this should actually be two items. That's okay, thank you. Same sections? Correct. Okay. As amended, Salt, Blanchett. All in favor? Carried. Thanks Thank you. For coming. Thank you. Thank you.